Hey guys, this is Jay here from Gym Aware. Really hope you're enjoying Coach Tomato's podcast series so far. Here at Gym Aware, we've just released our brand new BBT product, Flex. Um, so I just want to give you a bit of insight into what it is and how it could help you as a coach or athlete. Flex uses brand new laser optic technology to measure barbell velocity, so like Gym Aware, it's highly accurate. The device connects straight to your iPhone or iPad. We've had an independent validation study to confirm that Flex is highly accurate. We have loads of awesome features already and our experience development team continues to work on software updates each and every day. Key performance metrics are available including both peak and mean velocity, peak and mean power, distance, bar position and bar path. If you guys want any more information on flex, velocity based training, just be sure to reach out, go to our website, check us out on socials as well. But for now we hope you enjoy the rest of Coach Kamea's podcast. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some fantastic practitioners that are always searching for more. But more what? What are strength and conditioning coaches searching for to better their ability to prepare their athletes? Well, what about cutting edge information or a place where you can find different opinions from forward thinking coaches on what you're doing, how you're doing, and try to get feedback to be better for your athletes? Or what about a place where you'll find like-minded coaches that can provide solid coaching advice and career development for you as you progress through your career as a strength and conditioning professional? Well, this is exactly why we built the Strength Coach Network. You'll have access to exclusive monthly content on top of the sensationally active forum that we have where you can communicate with coaches all over the world to find those answers that you're looking for to help you be a better practitioner for your athletes. So make sure you hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash C-V-A-S-P-S, and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 81st episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper in the minds of the top practitioners in the world of sport performance to learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the head strength and conditioning coach at North Scott High School in Eldridge, Iowa, Tony Stewart. Tony, man, thanks for being with us today. Hey, glad to be back, Jay. It's always always fun talking to you. Yeah, man, it's great to see you. I'm so glad you're doing well, man, and things are good out there. But before we get too far into this, buddy, who is Tony? (laughs) Oh, man, that's the first question. Who am I? guess there's a lot of layers there, but uh, um, I suppose we'll have to keep talking and find out. But um, <laughs> I, I guess who am I? Uh, number one, uh, I'm a family guy, uh, somebody that takes care of my family. Um, I like to translate that to my kids at school. Um, and that's grown as we talk. We can kind of talk about that a little bit more. But uh, definitely that's changed a little bit my perspective as I've gotten older as a coach and and uh, had kids and family, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. So, yeah, and also let's not um, let's not like talk down about your role zuh, when it comes to what you do at school. Like when you want to talk about people that are invested in their community and in the program and in the school that they get to work at, um, you're more in than these Robin Hood cats that are jumping on uh, GameStop right now, for sure. Yeah, you know, we're, uh, I think that's one of the unique things about being in a high school. Um, and I guess before I even came here, it's a small community um, made up of, we. it's a small, big school, if that makes sense, but made up of a lot of smaller communities. So we're not just one town, you know, there's probably five five to six different small towns that come together. Um, each town has its own unique school, like elementary school. They're very prideful in their own town. But then when you get to where I'm at in high school and the, uh, everybody gets to come together and there's just a lot of pride in our community um, just for a lot of things. But that's one of the things that will stick out to me. My first year, my dad worked in high school. He's a, he's a coach, guidance counselor for years. Uh, I remember him coming to a basketball game with me and we had a really neat setting. Um, it's called the pit for the high school. Basically you're, you know, the, 
the stands come down to the field or to, me, to the court and it's basically dug out into the ground and when it's full and it's packed it's just the really needed high school environment i'll never forget my dad the first game i brought him to was like say hey you're in a special place son like you just he's like you better appreciate it because not every place is like this and over the years uh, i've really realized that i honestly i kind of got chills thinking about that uh because he, he was right um and it's really shown. Uh, so, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's a pretty, pretty special place. That's awesome, dude. And I think that what's really cool is that you found a place like that to be able to be part of. Because you, you know, you did, you know, have your time where you were working at, you know, FBS and FCS programs to, to have the chance to, to have the chance to do what we say. And that is to, quote, make it the big time where you're at. Mm -hmm. um, which is kind of just a cool, cheesy, cliche way people like to say, just be happy for where you are and, and shut up at times. Um, but to actually be able to do that and to have so much invested in it and seeing so many awesome things growing, like what we were talking about with your football program and all that earlier, like that's pretty rad, dude. Like that's, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, you're, you know, Frosty Westring, you ever read that book, Make the Big Time Where You Are? I think that's kind of where that uh, that quote came from. Um, I think it maybe took me a little while uh, here. Uh, I always enjoy it here. I've always invested. But uh, over time, I kind of realized what that meant. Um, you know, just to me, I'm going to give you an example. I think Make the Big Time is, you know, a couple, you know, I think it's two summers ago, um, I had a kid that I had for three years. So he was a sophomore when I first came. Um, was back in town after he, you know, after he'd been doing his thing. I heard heard the weight room. Our new new weight room gets pretty loud. It's kind of a separate building, and he was running. Heard the music on. Saw that I was in there. Just just stopped in, uh, and that that ended up in some tears and hugs at the end of before COVID. By the way, uh, at the end of our conversation. Um, and it was just a lot of things that we talked about in high school. You know. As he got older, like it made, he went through some struggles, but then it made some, a huge difference on his life. You know, when you think about coaches, everybody's got these stories, but that was one that really kind of hit to me. It's like, you know what? The work we do is important. Uh, it doesn't always have to, like I said, it's outside the rack. It's not always in the rack, but that's, that's our avenue. That's our, um, that's our path uh, to make a change and make a difference in people's lives. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome, awesome. man. But to build that and to be able to carry as many different responsibilities as you, you do down there, like, you know, teacher, administrator, strength coach, football coach, quite a bit. And as someone who has been at some pretty high levels as well, there definitely has been some times where you've had to take a step back, and kind of have a learning moment. So if you wouldn't mind, describe a situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. Okay, I don't want, I don't want to stroke, stroke your ego here, <laughs> uh, but I am going to go back to, so I, when I came to high school, you know, what do you know uh, when you're coming? Again, I came out of, you know, being trained by people that, um, you know, are very well respected in uh, college ranks and some in the professional at times, and, you know, I trained as an athlete, you know, as a, at a fairly high level, maybe not personally, but I was trained like a fairly high level person. Um, so you kind of learn that when you get to high school, my first, the first thing I did is, Hey, we're going to, we're going to implement this program. Um, it's going to be like what we've done. And, and I had success. So don't get me wrong. But over the years, I just kept realizing, it's like, this is not necessarily what I want to do with these kids. Um, Cause they're not who I've been around. And you hear it all the time, like you can't train your high school kids like, you know, local university does. People say that, but when you go around, most of the time, that's exactly what you see, you know, um, and I'm not, but, you know, contrast, I mean, all that stuff, that, that can be great, but I just felt like we're doing so many things that are, maybe they're not prepared for yet. Um, what, what, what can we, what can we do to make progress? To if they get to that point, that little higher level training, that, that they're going to still have some in the tank. We're going to still have something to build on uh, in the future instead of going right to the end game right now. Um, 
and I'll when I, I don't know if it was the first one, it might have been the first uh, sea bass, but it's when I kind of got really introduced to Dr. Yeses, some of the one by twenty stuff, the the minimal stuff, and then I really kind of dove into that after leaving your conference. Um, it was just to me, it was the first time I'll never forget thinking, man, this is this is not this is what I'm looking for. It's something that's not high level you know for the high performing athlete it's for what well, don't get me wrong from my standpoint it was here's where we can start we can build there and then the more i've learned obviously it can be for multiple levels and it is for multiple levels and it's not just a simple scheme and that's a whole nother podcast but that was really one of the big things uh that i that i took away and that kind of changed the tra trajectory of how i train our kids uh, at north scott so that was huge that's awesome, man. I'm glad that you were able to take something from that. And it's like, especially like that doc presentation, there were times where that got a little rough, uh, yeah. where he was, I mean, he was throwing some darts at people, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I do, I think that that's one of the misnomers about, you know, the whole one by 20 thing is it's like, that it only works for untrained people and there's no that it, it basically has it's like you do it right now and then you never go back to it when in reality like if you continually evolve the means that are being used in the method the method can continue to be effective for a very long time mm -hmm. yeah i and that's where again we all work with different kids but high school kids you know they love youtube they love seeing things the big thing for me is when I get kids to really see one of my, you love kids that ask questions, right? I'll never forget a kid as came as an eighth grader as a freshman and he was, you know, loved to lift. It's like, why do we do this? Why do we do this volume? Why are we there? Why did I suggest, and I would explain it to him and he still struggled. And then it was middle of his sophomore year, or maybe early junior year. I'll never forget. He just stopped in the middle of our lift and he goes, I get it now. He goes, I've never felt better. My performance is good. He goes, I get it. And that, that was awesome. And that was a young kid. So then we, we work all the way up through seniors, like, you know, with our football program, I'll use him an example this year because we had a fairly successful year. Um, <laughs> we didn't go towards the end when we got into championship season and whatnot, last couple of weeks, we did some low volume, fast speed stuff, but we didn't do more than one set all year i mean until we got we did a couple you know towards the end two sets of three or maybe two sets five with speed emphasis for the last couple of weeks but other than that we did one one set of everything and and our kids were healthy they were i don't know it was just it was just neat to see now are they power lifters no you know maybe we're not going to go squat 600 pounds for one right now but i don't really need them to do that um it's kind of so it's I agree with you it doesn't have to be a short-term thing which I think you're like you said it's a misnomer it doesn't have to be a short term it's not just for an eighth grader um, I've seen a yeah 100 percent. and I think too the other thing like bringing that up I think that's a great point like you know like your kids can't squat 600 pounds and I think that the big thing with that is just that kind of ego check that a lot of us have at some point where it's like were we chasing the squat numbers or bench numbers or whatever numbers mm. because it's important or were we chasing those numbers because it was important to us and we thought it was cool. And, and then are we kind of putting them in a spot where forget about if it would be detrimental to performance, because we could argue that, because, you know, how strong is strong enough? I mean, then all of a sudden the internet blows up, right? But let alone how deep should you squat? Like, let's not even get near <laughs> that. But um, are you just chasing these things so that you feel better and feel more secure about what you're doing as opposed to the kids feeling better and feeling more secure about being able to play their sport? Right. That's, that's important. That's that's a battle I went through, and I ever talk to people, I tell them I said I'm not because I, I get, do get a lot of high school coaches and some others that will contact me about because they know what we do and they're kind of thinking about it, but it's a dip, it's a change, it's different, right? And 
like you said, the biggest thing I had to get over was my own ego and my own, like, well, this is all we're going to do. Like, I want to, I want to see this on the bar. I want to see that. And, you know, cool that just, for example, at high school, uh, senior baseball player the other day, uh, he squatted, back squatted 300 pounds for 20 reps. It's decent. I mean, for a high school kid, <laughs> you know, and that's, and I've had others and like the kid's strong. Like, and I went to, our baseball coach had a little clinic for youth and all they were doing was just raving about how strong he was and how hard he can throw and how, you know, he can hit the ball and all that stuff. I'm like, hmm. and guess what? He also caught the, the, he caught the touchdown to win, win our semifinal game in the state championship for football too, so, as a tight end. So, I mean, kids had a pretty successful career so far. I mean, you know? that's all that really matters, right? Right. You know? But listen, man, as we get going through all that, I mean, there's been times where you've had to take that step back and really kind of think, like, what's going on? How can I be better? What can I do more for the kids? How can I be better for the community with everything that you're doing? So I'm really excited to hear this one. Because to do that, you've got to ask a lot of questions. So if Tony could ask one question and get the answer to it, what would that question be and why? <laughs> this is a hard one. Um... I could go a couple different ways. I'm going to keep it kind of in our, in our wheelhouse here, but I think the one question I would want to ask, you know, is, you know, from a performer standpoint would be, did I make a difference in kids' lives? Uh, and not, like I said, not necessarily from a performance standpoint, I guess, but within our job realm, you know, and I know, I know how I've been the last 12 years. Um, I'm sure I've had some, had some not so great moments, had some good moments. Um, but I would love to know, you know, all those kid, people out there, you know, people contact you. But other than that, like, are, is what I'm doing is the mission that I have right now as a coach to help kids. Is it, is it something that's, that's been working? Um, and I know it's improved over the years. Uh, because I've changed, you know, I've changed how I coach my approach and um, that'd probably be one, uh, but I'm going to change direction on here. One question I could ask or that I could get asked is what the hell actually happened with our election? <laughs> was it, was it legitimate or was it not? And somebody just show us <laughs> all this fighting. I would like to know the truth of everything. That's it. I would love to know that question. You know, and I don't think that that, like, uh, first of all, I'm going to answer the first one. Yes, because of everything that you're doing, the, the answer is bound to be yes. But two, like, I think that that's the one thing that if they just would have done an audit, like a truthful yeah. audit, bring in some third party to do this, I think we'd be in such a better place. Absolutely. And I don't think anybody, at, at the end of the day, I don't really think anybody cares who won. They just want to know is the orange man right or not? Like, right. is he just being a schmuck? Like he has been, because he's kind of been a schmuck. Yeah. Or is this, is there any truth to it? To just sit here and come out and be like, no, he's lying. Okay, well then just show us that he's lying. Right. Like actually show, here's what it is. We right. went through and did X and we found Y. Correct. The problem is, with all of it, you can't say there's no voter fraud because there's always voter fraud. Because there always is, right. Right. But did it impact things or not? If it didn't, then just show the numbers right. and everybody's fine. You know, everybody would probably be like, okay, cool. Can we now stop this COVID crap too? Like, can we fix that now? Because then if we fix that, then all of a sudden we're back to the initial problems that we were having in the summer. We can actually talk about making this country better. Absolutely. But that's a beers on the table conversation. That is, sure. that is for sure. <laughs> I mean, we have, I truly believe this. We all have way more in common than we think. But when you do, when you do, like I said, the, you know, orange man, you know, fraud, 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 not just him. But they have, no, he's a liar. You know, you're bad. You're bad. Well, let's just find out. Do we not? I mean, I want to know, to me, it's, it's about integrity, right? That's kind of our job too. Let's have some integrity. Let's serve the people that we work for, right? That's our entire life is we're going to serve the people that we work for, which is our student athletes first, coaches second in an ideal world, but maybe sometimes it flips there, but you know what I mean? So, you know what, why, why can't our leaders just serve us 
and give us the truth and say, here's what it is. This happened, this didn't happen. And then, like I said, then I think everybody would just be okay. I mean, you'd still have arguments, but we'd be able to move past it and maybe COVID go away, whatever, you know, but that's a question that, man, I sure would like to get answered. I don't know if it ever. I just think that right now people just want to be too divisive. I mean, shoot, you can't even, like, there's politicians that can't even agree that the GameStop thing was bad. Like, it's like, hey, I'm with you. Like, you're far right, I'm far left. We're together. And it's like, no, you're a bad person. It's like, guys, we don't, we don't elect you to have slap fights on Twitter. Like we elect you to help fix problems that we're noticing and an application fixing the market because certain people tell them to in a free market system is a problem. Work together to fix it. That's an issue. Yeah. Like no one cares about your other problems. Fix that one. Yeah. I don't know, right. whatever, that's it. Yeah, no, that's why I'll never run for public office, but well, I mean, I'd never win anyway, but. <laughs> I, I hear you, I think I think you have to have some, I, I don't know, I, I got some stories there, because I had some family members in public office and there's some, there's some things that you have to do if you want to raise up in the ranks. I mean, unless you're an anomaly, uh, it's just yeah, crazy. No thanks, I'd rather not know, to be honest. Yeah, no, probably right. <laughs> But no, nah, man, listen, like you're coaching, you're a strength coach, you're a teacher, you're on different aspects of the, you know, the community within the school board and things of that nature. So you're busy. You got three kids. So like, you're a busy dude. Pretty busy. <laughs> so how do you come back to neutral, man? What's your escape? You know, I, was, I, was, I asked my wife that question. That's kind of sad. Like I said, I said, Jess, what do I, so what's my escape? Um, and I think just one, what I've kind of come to, uh, you know, two things. One, I've been, we talked about a little bit, but for so long, I've been focused on everybody else. Uh, I'm really starting to focus a little bit more on my own health, uh, which I did. When I, when I came out of, you know, grad school, man, I trained. My first couple of years here, I trained hard and I just, you know, but then one kid to two to three to, and kids don't mean I mean that means little league practice and you need a coach for little league and it's just all the stuff and last few years I really kind of neglected uh my own health a little bit Uh, but that's something I'm trying to bring back into focus um so that's kind of cop out but as far as you know centering you know when I come home I'll sit down and read two two kind of things I obviously you know we read for for professional reasons but I do enjoy kind of digging into politics just to kind of learn uh, what's going on and from both perspectives. So I'll read that. And then um, I, you know, I, I don't read a lot of religious texts necessarily as far as different books that people read, but I really started a little bit more um, to dive into my own faith a little bit. So I'll sit and I had a guy in my church challenge. Like, have you ever read the Bible from front to back? I'm like, well, no. He's like, why don't you? I said, well, okay. So that's why I just started reading a little bit more there. Um, but other than that, you know, those are kind of the two places that I that I go when I come home. So. I love it. That's awesome stuff. And I think that those are great ways to kind of dig back into what we really are, man, and looking at who we are on the inside. That's awesome stuff. So, yeah, I mean, that's good. And I, if I get an opportunity, you know, I still love to fish um love to get outside uh and then again i said i got kids i coach my kids um i coach football at the high school still but to be honest my favorite sport to play was baseball (laughs) and we have summer baseball i don't really get a chance to do that with our high school because so much the the training schedules and so i coach my kids in baseball and that's that's an escape too i enjoy doing that so love it i love it well tony this is awesome stuff man i really appreciate your time thank you so much thank you Yeah, we'll be in touch real soon, buddy. Cheers. Yep, take care.